Good morning, dear learners. In this short video, we will discuss the essay of studies written by Francis Bacon. This is an essay prescribed for many of the undergraduate and postgraduate degree programs of English language and literature. So we will straight away get into the essay. Uh, this essay uh, he begins by talking about the three different purposes of studies. He says that studies serve for delight, ornament and ability. How does it serve as a delight? It serves in solitude or in retirement. As an ornament, it is beneficial for you in discourse, that means in conversation your studies proves to be beneficial for you. As an ability, it serves in judgment and disposition of business. What does that mean? It means that when you take crucial decisions and important judgments, your studies will help you. So these are the major purposes that he highlights as the benefits of studies. Now, he says that, however, spending too much time in studies is sloth, that means it's laziness, and also to use them too much for ornament is affectation, that is pretension. You are not supposed to do that, and to take decision wholly by the rules of studies is the humor of a scholar. He has already outlined three important purposes of studies. Number one, it serves as a delight, as an ornament and as an ability. But again, you, have, you should not depend too much on this. That means to too much dependence or spending too much time for studies is laziness. And also, if you take decision wholly by the rules of studies it's also a somewhat similar to the uh, uh, of uh, something that a scholar does so we find that how do how to approach studies studies are perfected by experience he gives an example of a natural plant we know that a plant needs trimming for better growth similarly studies needs to be perfected by experience okay he says that crafty men condemn studies simple men admire them and wise men use them and it helps man to learn from observation then he moves on to the purpose of reading why do we read it is not to contradict or to confute or to take things for granted or to find talk or discourse, but to be and consider. What does that mean? You know, our purpose of reading and acquiring knowledge is to just oppose others or to accept whatever things that we learn from the books or to apply these things in our conversations, but to understand and appreciate we and consider we have to develop a kind of critical understanding. That is the purpose of reading. So you have to be very particular about the type of books that you read. Look at this. How to read books. It says some books are to be tasted, others to be swallowed, and some few to be chewed and digested. He explains that is some books are to be read only in parts others to be read but not curiously and some few to be read wholly and with diligence and attention. He says, you know, all books are approached not in the same way. There are books that we can read only in parts. That is why he says some books are to be tasted and others are to be sallowed. You read it but you are not reading it you know, just for curiosity. But some books are to be chewed and digested. 
is very important. What does that mean by chewed and digested? You have to read with diligence and attention. You have to clearly, thoroughly go through these books. And also he talks about another type of reading. Some books also may be read by deputy and extracts made of them by others. But that would be only the less important arguments and the meaner sort of books. Else, distilled books are like common distilled waters, flashy things. He says that some of the books can be read in parts made by others, but it is just like you uh, drink a distilled water. It's flashy things. This can be done only in meaner sort of works. So these are even today relevant. Though this essay was written way back, we know that we have to have a clear idea about the type of books that we read and the way it must be approached. So this is the idea that he shares about books. Then he continues, reading makes a full man, conference a ready man, and writing an exact man. A wonderful quote from this essay, reading makes a full man, conference a ready man, and writing an exact man. What do you mean by that? You know, if a man does not write much, he needs to have a great memory, if he does not speak much, he needs to have presence of mind. If he does not read much, he should have much cunning and be able to pretend that he knows what he does not really know. So reading and writing and speaking help you to develop a lot of skills. That's what he says. When you write down, you are able to memorize things. That's why writing is very important. And also when you able to converse with people, you will develop presence of mind. And you know, if you don't read, you don't have knowledge about the world and you claim to know certain things that you don't really know. This is a problem. That's why I look at the court once again. Reading makes a full man, conference a ready man and writing an exact man. So let's move on to benefits of studying different subjects. He says, he suggests some of the topics that can be some remedies of the problems that we face in our mind. A study of history makes a man wise. Study of poetry makes him witty. Mathematics makes a man exact and precise. Natural philosophy increases the depth of the mind. Morals make a man grave. Study of logic and rhetoric makes him more comprehensive. Studies pass into character. What does that, what does that mean? Your character is shaped by the books that you read. A man's character is influenced and defined by the type of books he reads. So this is very important. This is some of the remedies that he suggests. Some of the problems that your mind faces. If you engage in the study of these different subjects, that will benefit you a lot. That's why I feel this essay is remarkable even today. Now let's, how proper studies help the mind. You know, he suggests that, you know, just like some of the treatments help the body. Similarly, for example, he talks about that in detail. You know, for example, if you walk, that is beneficial for your uh, stomach. And similarly, some of the subjects, if you study, that will be beneficial for you. For example, if you have a problem with, you know, your mind wanders, you can concentrate. How can you do that? You can study mathematics. Mathematics is the remedy for a wandering mind. If a man is unable to make distinction, he must study the schoolmen. If he is not quick in passing through matters, he should study the law. So different subjects, when you engage in the study of different subjects, that will be a cure to some of the problems of your mind. So he concludes this essay by talking about these different benefits of studies. So I think this is a wonderful piece of work that you have to read and appreciate. And I think this is even 
uh, relevant today, uh, not for just for the students of literature, but for the general public as well. What are the ideas that Francis Bacon shares in his in this essay? So I request all of you to go through this wonderful essay of studies by Francis Bacon and to devote some precious time for expanding the horizon of knowledge that all of us have. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this short discussion will be beneficial for the students of literature and the general public alike. If you like this video, you can share, like and subscribe my channel as well. Thank you for watching. Thank you.